Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to go over the switch statement in C++. So a switch statement is useful for comparing a single value against multiple values. So in C++, you've already learned how to do so using if else condition statements. So let's go over an example where we use an if else statement. So let's say you're playing a game and you have multiple items and you want to use an item and the first item is red potion, then I have green potion, blue potion, a hamburger, and a super red potion. So I want to use item four. So item four refers to the index of the item. So red potion is at zero, green is at one, blue is at two, hamburger is at three, and super red potion is at four. So whenever I use an item, I need to do a comparison to see which item I'm using. So in the first case, we have if item is equal to zero, three, or four, we are going to recover 50 HP, which is health points. And if item is four, then we also have an additional effect where we increase the attack strength of the player. Else, if item is one, we have green potion. So this would cure the poison status. And if item is two, we have blue potion. And then else, we don't know what the item is, so nothing happens. Okay, so if I run the program with this if else condition statement, and I want to use item four, you can see attack strength increased and recover 50 HP. So this will hit this if condition statement. And let's change this to item two, which is this blue potion. So if I save and run the program, you can see recover 20 MP, which is for magic points. So this is simple because we have five items, but if you are playing a game, you might have more than five items. You might even have, let's say a hundred items, in which case you would be creating an if else chain of a hundred comparisons. So you would do, is item equal to zero? Is item equal to one, two, three, four, five, up to a hundred. And when you have that many comparisons, it may become very difficult to read and it's also very slow. So if I had, let's say 100 items, what I would need to do is go through 100 blocks of code. And this is what's known as an if else ladder. So for instance, when I wanted to find item two, I'd had to go through this condition block and then this one, and then this one. For that reason, we want to use a switch case statement because this would simplify the code a bit and it would also make it much more performant. And actually let's also try another value where let's say if I put eight, we expect this to hit this default else case. So let's save and run the program. And as you can see, nothing happened. All right, so let's transform this by using a switch case statement. So I'm going to get rid of this. All right, so now we have our notes here. And let's say I want to use item zero, which is the red potion. So to write a switch case statement, I would do switch and then I would pass in the value I want to compare. So I'm going to do item. And then instead of doing if items equal to zero, one, two, three, I'm just going to do case. And I'm going to put the value I want to compare it to. So in this case, I would do case zero and case zero, zero refers to red potion. So I would do C out recovered 50 HP. And then I can have another case, so I can do case one, and one is green potion. So I'm going to do C out, cured poison status. And I can also do case two, and two is the blue potion. Recover 20 MP. And we can also have a default case for a value that does not exist. So I can do default. So if I put in eight, it's going to hit the default case. So here I can just say C out, nothing happened. So this is a lot more readable. And basically when we do a comparison for this variable item, when we compile the C++ code, we create a jump or lookup table and basically, instead of checking, is it case zero, is it case one, is it case two, we are going to just jump to that case. So for instance, if I have items equal to two, 
it's going to ignore these and just jump to case two. So let's say I want to use item two and I need to know the effects of item two. So let's say I have a blue potion. So if I save and run the program, you can see we jump to the effects of item two, which is case two, but you might notice we also print out nothing happened. And that is because with switch case statements, when you jump to a case, you need to add a break statement at the very end. Otherwise, it's going to trickle down and check the next case and execute that block of code. So for instance, if I didn't add this break statement and I change item to zero, it's going to jump to case zero and then trickle down to case one, two, and default. So let's save and run the program. So you can see it jumps to case zero, then it trickles down to one, two, and then default. So here I would add a break statement and you want to add a break statement for each case. So now when I jump to case zero, it's going to execute this line of code and then break out of the switch statement. So we can use break statements with for loops and while loops, but we can also use them for switch case statements. So if I save and run the program, you can see when I activate item zero, which is the red potion, we just hit this case and we print out recover 50 HP and we exit. Now you might be wondering why we need to manually add the break statements ourselves and why doesn't C++ just automatically end the case for us? Well, the reason is you can have two cases that have the same code block. So for instance, here we set red potion and hamburger. Both of these items have the same effect. So they both recover 50 HP. So what I can do is I can add another case over here. So in this case, hamburger is at index three. So I can do case three like so. And you can see there's nothing inside case three. So remember what happens if I don't add break statement is just going to trickle over. So when I want to search for item three, it's going to trigger this case. And since there's nothing here, it's going to trickle down to the next case, which is case zero and execute the code within that case. And then here we can break out. So essentially we are grouping case three and zero together. And usually when you do something like this, it might be easier to read if you separate the groups like so. So now if I save and run the program, you can see if I have item three, which is the hamburger at index three, we hit this case three and then we do nothing and we trickle down to case zero because there's no break statement and we print out this value. And another thing we can do is we can add another case and apply code within that case block. So for instance, super red potion, which is at index four, I can do case four and here I can do C out attack strength increased. And then if I change item to four, what this is going to do is it's going to jump to case four, print out this line and then trickle down to case three, which does nothing. And then case zero, print out this line and then break. So if I save and run the program, you can see attack strength increased and recovered 50 HP. Okay, so this is how you can use a switch case statement to organize your comparisons if you're comparing only one value. So instead of writing if items equal to four, else if items equal to three, else if items equal to zero, and so on, you can write a switch case statement. And because this uses a lookup table or a jump table, we don't need to go down the ladder. And instead, we are just going to jump to the case we want and execute the code until we hit a break statement. Okay, and another thing to note that if you are coming from Java, you might already be familiar with the switch case statement. And in Java, you can compare string values, but in C++, you cannot compare string values in a switch case statement. All right, so yeah, this is switch case statements, and hopefully you understand how it works and when to use a switch case statement. And if you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you want to stay up to date on more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.